Yeah, I think um, I think what's happened is uh, the Overton window, you know, this idea of what is and isn't acceptable to talk about has shifted. And there's a lot of people like a lot of folks in my church probably thought the Gospel Coalition was really good just a couple of years ago. Right, right. right. And um, and our church is, is mostly geared by word of mouth. It, it, it wasn't really directly connected to my online presence. Um, it was pretty impressive. Folks didn't find out that I was doing all this other stuff until sometimes months into the church plan. Um, and uh, so in other words, these are just kind of what we would call normies waking up. Mm-hmm. And, and anytime you uh, wake to something, there can be kind of a cage stage and finding a new balance. <clears throat> so we have a lot of people who are thinking about things they've never thought about before, right? I mean, part of the problem is that most American churches have never really taken the time to develop a doctrine of the relationship between the church and the magistrate and it showed, right? Right. And so now folks are thinking, and we're seeing like a lot of like hard swings, you know, guys that weren't leading their house now are patriarchal, but they still haven't developed ability. They're just claiming their authority. And um, they've, they felt the responsibility. Now they're claiming the authority. And now it's like, well, okay, level out, develop the ability. Uh, we have uh, church members that always want to be in kind of outrage stage, they're right to be outraged by all these abuses, but now you have to kind of uh, balance out, like you said, get into that normal rhythm of life. Mm-hmm. You realize that you that your old rhythm of life was soothing you into a sort of sleep. We're not trying to soothe you in the sleep. We're trying to uh, stabilize you into, you know, church like week after week after week. I think I've missed church 15 times since I've been saved in mm-hmm. 1997. Right. And uh, when I became a new believer, I just thought, you know, I'm just never going to miss church because I figured no matter what, that would keep me accountable to God. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny how people think that uh, will keep you accountable to God is your personal devotions. Right. And uh, as if like back in the early days of the church, everyone has their, their own Bible and they're going out to read, you know, 15 <laughs> minutes. Of course, they, they, nope. they would memorize this stuff and they would they would sing it. They'd revise it in their head. They, they, they had it in their head, no doubt. But mainly it was that public gathering where they're, where they're having the word preached. And what we need now is um, what we don't want is sycophants, that fanboys are coming to our church to hear us hit our same um, kind of points like men should be leaders and uh, you know, the church shouldn't be weak or whatever. All those things are true, but I'm going to preach to the sin of the people in front of me, right? <laughs> right? So I'm not there to beat up on them per se, but I am there to help them mortify their sin. And I think some people come to churches of those of us that have a influence through the internet and they come there, like people will come to my church and think it's going to be the masculinity church. Mm-hmm. Like that's all we talk about, but it's not, we, we exposit the, the entirety of scripture and we think every word uh, spoken out of the mouth of God is something that matters and needs to be given attention. So when we don't hide from it, we speak to the, the issues of the day, but a, a big part is a pastor having the guts. Like I, I called out QAnon from my pulpit. I didn't even care about QAnon. It didn't matter to me. It seemed like this weird thing. You know, I, I, I you know, it's rare that I want to talk about gospel coalition was act, acting like it was a really big deal. I didn't, I didn't buy that at all, but I got to tell you after Trump lost the election, I had some really sober friends, like totally go down the QAnon, QAnon rabbit hole. Mm. And what bothered me about it was that it was starting to get into the prophetic realm, right? Where, um, there it's basically, it was like charismatic prophecies, but in political language. And so, you know, really, um, Trump is really ruined and reigning. This is all part of this. He's going to like have these tribunals and all this stuff. And what would remind me of the, uh, prophets in Jeremiah 28 and where they're like, look, you're not going to be in Babylon. You're not going to stay in exile within a year. We're going to break his yoke. Right. And does this, all this big show. Jeremiah's like, no, no, you're staying in, you're, you're doing your 70 years. It's happening. And these guys are kind of preaching this, you know, Joe Biden's really not going to be a president. <laughs> and may, maybe he's not right. But, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, but he is, mm-hmm. he's got the name. Um, and so I called that out. I called it out because I didn't want to be owned by anybody. I don't want to be owned by the commies and I don't want to be owned by a bunch of nut jobs. So we lost three or four families. Mm. Um, I didn't like, I didn't make it very personal, but it, I, I, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're representatives of Jesus. And our job is to call out sin and go after truth, 
um, wherever it is. And that's our job in the pulpit to deal with the sheep in front of us. And so some of these guys are coming to these churches um, and they, they're kind of finding a new equilibrium. And so we're, everything's being reset right now. Like there's not, there's not a single trustworthy denomination, hmm. right? There's bad SBC churches. There's bad PCA churches. Uh, there, there's some pretty weak CAC churches out there. Tons of bad Baptist churches, you know, evangelical free, whatever. There's not like one true layup right now. Hmm. There's now I would think I'd say my denomination on whole really is broadly reformed and not woke at all. <laughs> but, um, but you know, do they still really minister to the, the flock the way they should? You know, I can't say for sure. Um, but it's a rough time and where everything's being reset. So we are, I think the great reset is a blessing from the Lord. If yeah. we think about it the right way, we're, we're seeing our ecclesiological priorities and um, affiliations, friendship, allies, all that be reset right now. The leadership's being reset. They, they're like, you know, who cares about Matt Chandler anymore? Very right. few people, right? And think of, he was a superstar in the evangelical wor world just into a couple of months ago, but he was really on the downside already. You know, I remember when Russell Moore was patriarchal. Like, right, right. I, mean, I remember him being on um, uh, Nine Marks and pushing back on the word complementarian and saying how it was a bad word and he thought patriarchy was better. Mm. It was crazy, man. That was like Russell Moore. I remember that. And where's CJ Mahaney, Mark Dever? Where's he at now? They kind of went a little soft and weird on things. Um, R Russell Moore is a snake mm -hmm. uh, and he's done such a flip-flop. You have to just to question everything he's ever been involved with at this point. Yeah. It's so, it's so radical. It makes no sense. All those guys are gone or people have woke to them and there's kind of not been much in the middle. There's not been, so there's this huge vacuum that's being filled right now. And so I think it's making us rethink all this stuff, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, no, I, I like what you said in terms of, you know, I, I think a lot of times people are attracted when it comes to, you know, guys who, who have some kind of social media presence and platform. They've written a book like you, or uh, so they're an author, or they're a podcaster, YouTuber, or what, whatever it might be, conference circuit speaker. Um, one of the things that, that Christians like, everybody likes this, but uh, just something that, you know, that's innate to humanity is we, we like um, to decry the sins of others, right? Like, and so we like a guy who's going to get up there and tell it like it is. Um, but if we're honest, we like him to tell it like it is, uh, in regards to our opponents, um, in regards to their sin over there. And, and I think that, you know, sometimes, um, what people struggle with when they actually show up in flesh and blood to a church like yours, a church like mine is, um, that, you know, on Sunday morning, yeah, we, like there is a prophetic function of the church where we, we cry out to Kings and kingdoms and say, um, it is not lawful. Like John the Baptist, you know, it's like, it, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife when he calls out, you know, um, uh, when he calls out Herod and saying, you know, this is the, the law of God is eternal and it is binding on all people in all places and all times. It's not just that God has, um, his moral law for his people, but for all people. And so King Jesus is King, um, and he is your King and, and you have a moral obligation to submit to his, his kingly rule. And so that, that, that is a part of preaching. That's a part of the church. And I do that in my preaching quite regularly. Um, but that's not all of my preaching. In fact, that's, that, that can't even really be the bulk of my preaching. The bulk of my preaching is, uh, I'm not, I'm not preaching to a bunch of goats. Um, and I'm not even preaching to, you know, a bunch of wolves. I'm preaching, uh, to God's sheep. I'm feeding, uh, sheep. That's, that's, you know, first Peter five shepherd, the flock of God, among you, right? The, the flock of, not just the flock of God that you'll never meet on the other side, you know, in New Zealand who, you know, subscribe to your YouTube channel. I'm grateful for those people, but, but that's not, you know, as a local pastor, that's not somebody that I'm actually um, held accountable for their soul, keeping watch over their soul. And so when, when people show up um, to our, our actual churches in the flesh, uh, we're not just, they're not showing up to, to um, I think sometimes people think they're going to be showing up and we're going to be like, uh, like a gladiator in the arena. Um, um, and we're, and we're going to have this showdown fighting, you know, Joe Biden, and we're going to, you know, slit his throat or something, you know, and, and they're going to get to just applaud. And then they show up and we're using that double-edged sword, the, the word of God and exegeting it and, and heralding God's truths, um, and actually cutting them to the heart, you know, and, uh, and, and then all of a sudden they're upset about that. Um, 
you know, and so I, I think that, yeah, right now God is shaking things up. And, um, and I think that, you know, one of the things that's so, so lacking is, uh, is balance, um, pastors, you know, cause a lot of these guys, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of, we lost like half of evangelicalism, m- maybe more than half of evangelicalism. We lost them to civil tyranny and CRT, right? Like wokeness and, yep. and tyranny and, and all the, and it just turns out they, they were just Democrats. And then some yeah. of these guys, like I'm not exaggerating. I mean, Timothy Keller is a registered Democrat. Mark Dever is a registered uh, Democrat. And an article just dropped, you know, just even uh, a few weeks ago about um, this uh, this politician who's a member at Timothy Keller's church who got a perfect score um, by from Planned Parenthood. You know, and uh, wow. and and the person, you know, they interviewed him, and the person's talking about how much they love uh, their church and they love their pastor, Timothy Keller. And I'm thinking, like, somebody like that could never, like, they, they couldn't, they they literally would not be able to stomach my preaching. You know what I mean? Like, they would they yep. would be um, revolt revolting. They they would be like trying to hold back vomit. You know, as I as I'm preaching, and if they did somehow get through it, you know, and and pulled the wool over my eyes and became a member, uh, the moment that we became aware of that, they would be under church discipline. And um, you know, so uh, you know, but my my point is that like you know. Over half the church discredited itself, and it really is disqualified. Um, and I'm talking about leaders. I'm talking about pastors, and then and then the good guys. You know, if we could call them that, um, a lot of them are, they really are good guys. But a lot of these guys are they're one trick ponies. You know, like they yeah. they've got their their little hobby horse. You know, they're bang, you know, marching to the beat of this one drum, and it garnishes a ton of support. Like people like it. You know, and and people will show up, um, but they're not well rounded. They're not confessional. A lot of these guys, um, you know, they 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 don't they're, they're just they're lopsided. They're like you know, in one area maybe maybe they're really yeah. really sound, um, but then there's just so many weak spots, and that's one it's of the like in um. Have you seen uh the Lady in the Water by M Night Shyamalan? Yeah, that was the weirdest movie ever. But yeah, I saw it. There's one guy for some reason. Oh, yeah. he's, just, <laughs> he's just building this one really big arm, right? Right, right, right. And um, and that is that that's I've noticed this with pastors, but also with the members where it's like. The, the entrance right now into Christianity and into churches are very strange mm. where it's like someone will read Jordan Peterson and then they'll find me. And, and now they, they really think through Christianity uh, primarily through kind of a sexuality lens. Right. Or you have someone that, uh, you know, uh, we've got a large Canadian population that comes to our church and visits so, actually. So do we. Yeah. 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 We're actually helping um helping some of them uh, plant a church um, down here in the States for basically Canadian refugees. Right. Um, but it, they're interesting because they'll have this really developed doctrine of the lesser magistrate, mm-hmm. but no, almost nothing else of reform theology. So they have like this crazy civil doctrine. That's like good, crazy good. Like it's mm-hmm. well, well formed, um, but not know anything about ecclesiology or soteriology. It's, it's very fascinating. And so people are really, um, they are really imbalanced right now. All right, all right, all right. Stop twisting my arm. I know you want to hear the inside scoop. Here it is. The glorious vision of Right Response Ministries for the first half of next year, 2023. We have not one, not two, but three massive endeavors that we will accomplish by the grace of of God. The first you already know about. It's our Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference, May 5th, 6th, and 7th, with James White, Joe Boot, Gary DeMar, Dale Partridge, and yours truly, Pastor Joel Webbin. This is selling out incredibly fast. By the time this commercial airs, you may not even be able to get a ticket. I, I, I really don't know. So don't waste another moment. Go to rightresponseconference.com, rightresponseconference.com to join us for the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference next year. Now, this is where you come in. We need your help. Our next two endeavors are number one, a documentary style film, and number two, a brand new studio. Both of these things are seeking to accomplish one primary goal, which is excellent high quality, glorious Christian media. We are tired of, of, as Christians, doing things poorly. We've done our best with what we have, but by God's grace, we want to do even better. 
This is not going to be just another video. This is not going to be a sermon or an interview or a podcast, but we're going to make a documentary style film. And we're going to be hiring Nathan Anderson, the director of On Earth As It Is In Heaven, a very, very successful post-millennialism documentary that's on Amazon and YouTube, came out a couple years ago. He's going to be flying in from Chile to help us direct this film. And our documentary is going to be on post-millennialism and theonomy, why it's biblically valid, why it's absolutely necessary, and why, by the grace of God, theonomy and post-millennialism are currently on the rise. So we're going to make this film, and we need your support. And not just this film, but we're going to make all of our videos and podcasting and everything we do here at Right Response Ministries better. We want to achieve the highest level of quality and Christian excellence that we possibly can. That's where the new studio comes in. This new film, our our date that we're shooting for is that it would be complete and publicly available in May or June of 2023, next year. The studio, our goal is that it would be completely done in its construction and the equipment and the setup and the stage and everything by January, February of 2023 next year. We need your prayers. We need your encouragement. And for those of you who are willing to do so, we need your generous support. You can give towards these endeavors by going to rightresponseministries.com forward slash donate. Again, that's rightresponseministries.com forward slash donate. Thank you so much for all your help. God bless.